in an effort to intimidate me into removing blog posts that tell the truth about Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell and Richard Buell. Um, I know they're, they're threatening to have me charged with a crime. Blasphemous libel is a criminal act. It's essentially Canada's blasphemy law. I didn't know we had a blasphemy law until I was accused of violating it. And uh, I don't mind saying that I use that word violating it deliberately to remind people that this is all about Unitarian Universalists trying to cover up and hide violations of people's sexual integrity by a Unitarian Universalist minister by the name of Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell and a Unitarian Universalist uh, layperson by the name of Richard Buell. I don't believe Richard Buell was ever a Unitarian Universalist minister, but I could be mistaken. Good day. I almost didn't come because of cold. I said, you know what? It's a, an important anniversary today, so, <laughs> so I, <laughs> it's the 20th anniversary of my first complaint letter about the minister's behavior. <laughs> it's an important anniversary, I think. Two decades. Catch you later. So, so uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Uh, besides being uh, February 14th of uh, 2016, it is the 20th anniversary of February 14th, 1996, when I did deliver my lengthy and detailed complaint letter about Reverend Ray Drennan's uh, intolerant and abusive attacks on me. We're talking verbal attacks, not physical attacks. Uh, Reverend Ray Drennan uh, falsely and maliciously labeled a interreligious event that I'd organized as a cult, which is about one of the worst things that you can say about anyone's religious activities, and immediately brings up uh, images of uh, mass suicide and murder and so on. Uh, in fact, you know, when Reverend Ray Drennan did it. This was at the time uh, that the uh, Solar Temple cult suicide murder was in the news. Um, so, so it was really completely uncalled for. And in fact, uh, uh, prior to that, about a year prior to that, in 1990, or oh, maybe it was 1990. Four now that I think about it, so maybe more than a year, um, the president of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, uh, Frank Green, while I was organizing the first uh, celebration of Creation Day, actually, and, and this was right at the time of the uh, of the Solar Temple cult uh, murder suicides, uh, Frank Green came into the area of the church where I was organizing the first uh, celebration of Creation Day and amongst other stupid and uh, malicious comments said, oh, I hope what you're doing has nothing to do with the Solar Temple. You know, so he's basically insinuating a link between my interreligious celebration of creation, which was uh, set to take place whenever a total solar eclipse occurred somewhere in the world with the Solar Temple cult. They say, oh, I hope, I hope what you're doing has nothing to do with that. You know, so insinuating that, you know, what I was doing was cultish. Um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, then somewhat more than a year later, uh, Reverend Ray Drennan, who had just been chosen as the new minister of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, uh, uh, a few months earlier, so who, who was not minister at the time that uh, Frank Green made this solar temple uh, remark. Um, you know, I'm having a private meet, meeting with uh, Reverend Ray Drennan trying to explain to him what I'm trying to do, um, trying to explain uh, Creation Day to him, what it's about, trying to explain the uh, religious experience that inspired it, and uh, you know, I'm talking about Creation Day, and Ray Drennan angrily and aggressively interrupts me and says, you mean your cult? You know, and I'm a pretty 
calm, even-handed guy as a rule. So, so when he said that, I didn't get all angry and flustered. I said, well, what do you mean by cult, right? And he came back with, I mean a manipulative and secretive religious group. That's the exact words. Um, so he meant cult in the worst sense. He meant cult, you know, along the lines of the solar temple and, and so on. Along the lines of the heaven's gate and so on. Jim Jones and the Kool-Aid. Most ironically, uh, it's a little known fact that prior to uh, his mass suicide uh, with his cult, uh, Jim Jones had actually once tried to become a Unitarian Universalist minister. Um, so that's kind of ironic. Um, but in any case, you know, here's you know, Ray Drennan, no doubt partly as a result of the fact that uh, Frank Green and other people were saying pretty much the same thing, even prior to his arrival as a new minister of the church. I'm sure there was influence on him from Frank Green and, and other leading members of the church. I don't think that cult thing came from nowhere. In fact, when I challenged Ray about it, you know, he said, oh, I'm not the only one, you know, I'm not. <laughs> Other people are saying this, you know. So I'm just I'm just telling you what other people are saying, kind of thing, you know. Try to diminish his own role in it, um, or at least say that he has backing from other people that he's not alone in this, um, which uh, only showed that the matter was even worse than uh, just one Unitarian minister being an asshole. Um, so anyway, the uh, the upshot is 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 that. Uh, this is today the 20th anniversary, uh, February 14th, 1996, when I handed a uh, very detailed letter of grievance to the board of the Unitarian Church of Montreal while they were having a uh, board meeting. It was a Wednesday night, and, uh, and uh, I brought the copies of the letter, one for each board member, and couple extra copies for people like Reverend Charles Edis, who was the Minister Emeritus, um, to the board meeting and I distributed it to each member 20 years ago today. Um, and uh, you know, here we are, 20 years later, still protesting against not only Reverend Ray Drennan's behavior, which was never responsibly dealt with by the Unitarian Church of Montreal or the Unitarian Universal Association, uh, but numerous other uh, small acts and gestures carried out between individuals since. Uh, because instead of dealing responsibly with my grievances, you know, Unitarian Universalists have done all kinds of incredibly stupid and to themselves harmful things to try and uh, silence me hide the truth, and so on, uh, punish me. Uh, they have definitely tried to punish me for speaking out against uh, not only Reverend Ray Drennan's bad behavior, uh, but uh, the bad behavior of other Unitarian and Universalists. I mean, let's face it, you know, on at least two occasions, Unitarians have threatened me with a jail term for my activities. One being the false blasphemous libel accusation, which was brought against me uh, in June of 2012, not that long ago, uh, less than four years ago. So as I said, a blasphemous libel is a criminal act, and uh, if sentenced, convicted, if you're convicted of, of blasphemous libel, you're liable to a maximum two-year jail term. So, in theory, if I was charged, tried, and convicted of the criminal act of blasphemous libel, I could be sentenced to a two-year jail term. Um, if we go back to December of 2000, another little gesture of the Unitarian Church of Montreal was to have me arrested for allegedly violating uh, section 176.3 of the criminal code, which prohibits uh, disturbing the order and solemnity of a religious service. Um, and uh, that too 
is a criminal act that if if you're convicted of it uh, I believe the maximum sentence is two years in jail uh, so in two two separate occasions spaced apart by over a decade Unitarians have tried to put me in jail or threatened to put me in jail for protesting against Unitarian Universalist clergy abuse and other Unitarian Universalist injustices and abuses and hypocrisy. So, you know, if they want to play hardball with me, they shouldn't be surprised if I play a little bit of hardball with them back. Um, I successfully defended myself in court against the uh, false accusation that I'd uh, you know, disrupted the order of Solemnity Church services. Uh, it never should have gone to court. I mean, it never should have been arrested, let alone gone to trial. But uh, thanks to incompetent uh, or possibly corrupt police officers and incompetent Crown prosecutors, um, I won't call the Crown prosecutors corrupt because uh, at least the one who actually went to trial with me, a young rookie guy, um, I didn't see any evidence of actual corruption on his part. It was mainly a question of inexperience and I think being misled by the uh, members of the church. You know, he basically bought into the bullshit that was fed to him by Unitarian Universalists, thought he had a case against me. Um, but he acted honorably when I, in my cross-examination of the church's prosecution witnesses, specifically uh, Jeremy Searle, NDG city councillor and member of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, who I believe, based on the evidence, actually put quite a bit of pressure on the police to uh, arrest me. Uh, there's clear evidence that uh, Jeremy Searle repeatedly demanded that the SPVM do something, uh, and with his position as a city councillor, he had a certain amount of uh, influence that uh, an ordinary citizen might not have. Um, so he was one of the prosecution witnesses. 